All right, so we figured out our initial velocity by firing the marble straight up and down. We used our acceleration, we used our distance, and we used time to find our initial velocity. That's great, but that's a linear direction, right? That's only one direction, up and down. What happens if we take that marble shooter and turn it to an angle, okay? Let me find it. So if we take this shooter right here, and instead of 90 degrees, we put it at say something like 54. Let's put it at 54 degrees. We can't just do all that. We have to do a different way, a different technique. And this pro these problems are called projectile motion problems. So we're looking at a projectile in flight, tracking its motion using these same equations that you guys have been using. So automatically, we already know that one thing stays the same no matter what. And actually, two things will stay the same because we're using the exact same launcher. Alexa, can you tell me one thing that stays the same no matter what angle we fire this at? A equals 9.8. Yes, our gravity is going to stay the same. Our acceleration is going to equal 9.8 meters per second squared due to gravity. When you're on Earth and you're doing these, you always have this. No, it'll, it'll almost never tell you this, but always make sure that you have this because that's going to be your acceleration. All right, now Greg, what's something that also stays constant through these? Doesn't matter what angle, there's one thing that we just found that's the same. Initial velocity. Our initial velocity coming out of this thing, yeah. So the velocity that this fires a marble at doesn't change with its angle. It stays the same, which is why we went and we found that initial velocity in the first place. So we know our VI equals 6.34 meters per second. That's what we know. All right, now here's the part where, you know, having enough space to draw a huge picture comes in handy. Because this is how I want you to solve each and every um, projectile motion problem. We want to draw a massive picture. So, let's draw this out. What will this look like? We want to, the question is going to ask, be asked to you like this. The marble is launched from the marble launcher at an angle of 54 degrees. Where will the marble land? So you want to find the final position of that marble. So here's how you want to draw the picture, and I want you guys to do this with me. So we got our marble launcher, 54 degrees. X marks the spot. Where is that X going to be? How far away from the marble launcher is this landing zone? So go ahead and start drawing this with me. Pause the video if you need to to catch up. Right here, we're going to draw the path of the marble. Now, the, mar the path of the marble takes what's called a parabola. It'll go up, and it'll come back down. Okay, so that's the path of the marble. This is important to remember because we're going to be using these trig functions a lot with this path. So, here we go. We want to figure out how far away does that marble land. What's one way that we can do that? Well, one of the first um, things that you can do, and in physics this is like one of those rules that you can use to solve pretty much any problem that deals with projectile motion, is you can split this path in half, right down the middle. The law is, you know, what comes up must come down, but it's the exact same. So the path it takes to get to this halfway point is the exact same path it takes to get back down to its starting position, starting height. Okay, so this is at exactly half, which means the time it takes for this marble to get to this halfway point is the exact same amount of time as it takes to get to this point right here where it lands. Now Greg, what's something important to remember about this exact half point, the maximum point of its trajectory? What's something that the marble does right there? Oh, zero velocity. Zero velocity, that's right. It's, it's going up and then at that peak point, at the apex of the curve, it starts going back down. And we know the velocity is equal to zero. 
Velocity is equal to zero. So keep drawing along, keep drawing with me. And here's another thing that we have right here. We have now an x and y graph, right? So here's our y direction. You can look at it like this. And here's our x direction. So, if we want to find how far it goes in the x, but we don't know anything about it, we can first figure out some information about the y-axis and use that to help us to then figure out the x-axis. So, here we go. Alexa, we want to know... Here's, okay, let me start by saying this. We know that the initial velocity coming out of this marble launcher 6.34 meters per second. 6.34 meters per second. But that doesn't mean that the initial velocity going into y is 6.34. And it certainly doesn't mean that the initial velocity going the x is 6.34. That just means that the combined velocities of both x and y is 6.34. So Alexa, can you think of a way to figure out what the velocity in the y the y velocity will be, knowing this value and knowing this angle. Can you think of a way that we can do that? I'll give you a hint, we did it in the beginning of class. Oh, um, cosine, sine, tangent? Yes, cosine, sine, tangent. But which function would we use? Now, okay. this value right here, is it opposite of the angle or is it adjacent of the angle? It's opposite, so we would use we would use sine. Remember, because sine of the angle theta is angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. This value right here of six point three four. What what is that? It's the initial velocity. That's the initial velocity, but in regards to this, is that the opposite or is that the hypotenuse? Hypotenuse. That's the hypotenuse. You're exactly right. So when we write this out, it'll look like this. Sine of 54 is equal to this opposite, right? Our opposite value, our velocity, over 6.34. And Greg, this leaves us with a very simple algebra, right? What do we do? Multiply 6.34 on both sides. Yes, exactly right. So now... Um, is a relatively simple way of solving this. What I, how I do it is I do 54, then I press sine, and then I multiply that by my value, 6.34. And Greg, what'd you get for your y velocity? 5.13. Yes. You get that too, Alexa? Yeah. Very good, very good. So our y velocity is equal to 5.13 meters per second. Now, kids at home, make sure that you get this velocity. Make sure you can do this. If you can't do this, go back, watch the video, see where you might have messed up. But if you're drawing the picture and you're following along, you should be able to get there. Okay, so we now know this velocity right here. Knowing this velocity in the y, we can actually find the time it takes to get to this maximum height, right? So. Now we can use um, this formula right here. A equals delta V over delta T. Right? We can find the time it takes to get there. So what's our A, Alexa? 5.8. Yep. And what's our V? 5.8. Yes. So 9.8 is equal to 5.13 over delta t. So then we just very simply divide 5.13 by 9.8 and we get our t. So our t is equal to, Alexa, what'd you get? 1.52. Yes. You got the same thing, Greg? Yeah. Awesome. But Alexa, what's one thing that's important to remember about this time right here? It's only half. It's only half. So if we want to get total time, 
What would that be? Yes, 1.046 or 1.05. So our total time is equal to 1.04 seconds. Okay. Our t total. See, this is only half of our t because that's where this apex was, right? The maximum where it was zero, halfway, exactly half. So we have t total is equal to 1.04. Okay, good. So now, knowing all this, what's one thing that we can use from everything right here to help us find the x, Craig? What's the equation? Not the equation, but what's the value that we just discovered? Can we use? Uh, zero. And 1.04 is zero? Yes, 1.04 is the total flight time. That doesn't change in the x or the y, right? It's the same throughout. Because this marble is shot out, it might take... 0.52 seconds to get to this point, but also, if you can imagine a shadow on the ground going along with it, it takes the shadow 0.52 seconds to get to that point as well. So, if we're thinking about just strictly y and x, it'll take the same amount of time for that shadow to reach this point as it will the marble, and we just track the marble's flight. So we can use 1.04 seconds to figure out you know, where that marble's gonna fall. But first, what do we need to do? We need to find what in the x direction, Alexa. I'm coming back to you. What do we need to find in the x direction? That we already found in the y, but we need to find the x. Velocity. We need to find the velocity, that's right. Now how do we do that? This, we're looking for this value right here. And we have this angle, and we have that um, number right there, so what trig function will we use to find that x velocity? Is it opposite or is it adjacent of the angle? It's adjacent. It's adjacent, so we would use... Tangent? Or? We wouldn't use tangent because we have this hypotenuse angle right here. Oh, co cosine. Cosine, you're exactly right, remember. So, ka... Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so if we use cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, it'll look like this. Cosine of 54 degrees is equal to adjacent over 6.34. So our cosine of 54 degrees equals adjacent over 6.34. So let's figure out what this velocity is. 54 cosine times 6.34 equals, now Alexa, what'd you get? 3.73. Yes, 3.73. Can you get the same thing, Greg? Yeah. Awesome. So our velocity is equal to 3.73 meters per second. Now we can use this very simple equation to figure out how far it goes. Greg, can you think of this very simple equation? If we know our velocity and we know our time, can we figure out how far it goes? Yeah. How do we do that? Together. You multiply it together. That's exactly right. You with us, Alexa? Yeah. Awesome. So, Alexa, what are we going to do? Uh, sorry. You said uh, to find the distance, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so, 6.34 times... Um, uh, 3.73. Not exactly, okay? I want you to think about this. This 6.34 is just our initial velocity being shot out of here. What does our 3.73 represent? Oh, I mean, um, 1.04? Yes, yeah. times? Uh, 6.34? Not quite. Okay. Times what? 3.73. Times 3.73. Why do we multiply it by only our x velocity and not our initial? Because that's true. Because it's only, yeah, because we're only yeah. tracking it in this x direction. So we need to multiply it by only the x velocity. So then what do we end up getting? Times 1.04, we end up getting 3.9. And we'll make sure Alexa gets that too. Yeah. You got that too? Yeah. So then our x marks the spot where that marble should land. 
is about 3.88 meters or 3.9 meters. All right, so now we're gonna go out into the hallway and uh, test this and see if we're actually right and see if we're good uh, rocket scientists or not. Watch the video again if you're confused. Um, write a comment, do something, but practice this. There's two practice problems that are attached to this video. So do those practice problems. I want you to print it out if you can or get an extra sheet of paper and I want you to draw out the entire picture of what's happening. I want you to take up your whole page when you do this and send in a picture and um, have a good day. All right, so we got our test subjects here. We just measured out 3.88 or 3.9 meters right down there. So we're gonna fire off this marble launcher in three, two, one, shoot. Oh, just missed it. Right in front. We'll try it one more time. All right, we're back for test two. I think we had it set up a little bit wrong, but let's try this. Here we go, three, two, one. Ooh, that was a dud. We might have... We might have put it in the wrong rung <laughs> that time. Yeah. We just tried something.